Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're going to talk about a few things in our travel chat because I know we're going to have lots of travel questions because now things are really starting to pick up. You're seeing more and more people book trips, flights are getting more and more expensive, hotels are getting more and more booked. So there's a lot of things we need to talk about for travel this summer. But one thing I want to kind of talk about and I will actually bring up throughout this talk, especially for those people watching the replay, is I'm going to be talking about five or six friend trips that you can do because I've seen over the last two years how we've all kind of fallen away from some of our friends and some of our former travel buddies and, and we've been kind of insular and in our own homes and, and not necessarily out traveling with friends and and I know we started doing the family travel stuff but it's time to really talk about what are some things we can do with our friends again and so I'm going to go through a few different things we're going to talk about adventure travels we're going to talk about event trips we're going to talk about food trips shopping trips culture trips also other kinds of trips you can go on with your friends because what I've seen, and this is something I've seen with my students, what I've seen with the fellow travelers, people we've met, our friends, all kinds of stuff, is people have somehow like forgotten that it's okay to go hang out with your friends. It's okay to travel with your friends. It's okay to do stuff with them. And traveling with them sometimes is, you know, it's not always, you know, sometimes your friends uh, don't make it through your trip. But I think it's important for us to really start thinking about what are some things I could do to bring our friendships together again? Like what could bring us a bond again? Because I know for me, traveling with my friends, especially now that I'm traveling with friends again, you know, after, you know, the two years we've been going through, it's been really nice. I was in Miami with my buddy Magnus, you know, not too long ago. I would be with my buddy Dave in Barcelona and my buddy Fernando in Italy coming up pretty soon. And it's like, hey, but what are we going to do? Because after a couple of years, you can say, so what did you do? Like, did you watch everything on Netflix like we all did? Yeah. So. So there's some stuff we want to talk about with that. Um, so I will get to that here in a little bit because we just started, you know, I kind of made this last minute to do this because Jocelyn, if you don't know, Jocelyn is actually in uh, Greece right now celebrating Greek Easter. Uh, so she had a great time last night. Uh, you go to her Instagram, this one at Jocelyn Walters World right there. And you can see some of the cool stuff she's been up to. She usually posts on her stories. So go to the stories to see that. So good morning, everybody. I've got my Irish breakfast tea to get me going. Anyway, so looking at the kind of trips you can go with on friends, I think one that's kind of an easy one to do because it gives you kind of a goal when you're going to go on the trip is either is going to an event trip. Okay. And when I'm talking about an event trip, it could be a concert. It could be, um, you know, going to a sports event, you know, something that's like, hey, we're going for it this. Because then, after after all this time of us not being together, it's like it gives us something to focus on. Oh, we're gonna go see, you know, my friend and I. We went to a heat game, a heat game in, in Miami. So it gave us something to focus on. Okay, this is okay. So we're we're there together for three days. The first day we're chatting and talking, like, hey, it's good to see you again. The second day, like, we're going around Miami, like, so yeah, it's like, you know, it's kind of hard to get back into. It. Like, oh, we got the game tonight, and that gave us some stuff. They gave us stuff to talk about and brought us closer together and kind of brought us back. Um, by having that thing to focus on. And then the next day we had a good time together again. It was like, oh, it was like breaking the breaking the ice of friendship again. So if you're looking to go to sports events, you know, I know right now in the US, the NBA playoffs are going on. You've got major league baseball games. You know, if you're going to Chicago, going to the Cubs game is made to make friends. It's made to take your friends with with the, all the events going on around there and the clubs and bars and stuff. But the thing is, is it's not just that. Maybe you want to go to, like, I know I've gone to a number of soccer matches around the world. Australia went to Australia with a football match. Like, you have something where you're going together. And if it could be something fun, like, I know in the fall in the U.S., you have tailgating, which is basically you pre-party before the football game. And that's a nice way to bring a lot of friends together. And you can, if you want to socially distance, you have that. But it gives you time to talk, eat, and then have the game to go to. So that's one thing I think a lot of people miss out. I mean, later this year, you had the World Cup. So sometimes the event isn't actually going to the event. It's actually watching the event, whether it's a pay-per-view fight or something. But there's something like that. And I think that's one kind of easy way, especially for men. And I'm focusing a lot on men. I have some women's tips as well. But really, because I, I see a lot of men, especially older men, um, you know, my age and older, um, have really become more isolated during COVID. And they don't have a chance. and They haven't been with friends. And so this gives them a way to get out. So this might be something you might plan for your dad. Or, or your husband, or your boyfriend, or your partner, you know? So that's one thing there, okay? So that, that was what I want to talk about, sports or, sports trips or events trips, okay? 
Now, another thing I think is really a fun one, and that could be one if you're more active, is the adventure trip. So an adventure trip, basically you're getting back. So like where I live, people will go over to Missouri and there's a place called Current River and they'll go on a float. Like they float on inner tubes down the river, right? And they have an inner tube full of beer <laughs> that floats down with them. And they're just shooting, you know, you know, chatting and having a good time. But they're going on a little adventure. Maybe it's going on hikes. I know our friends in California, they have so many great hikes there that they go out and do their hiking. If you're going, if you're in Europe, you know, Switzerland with the, the spelunking and canyoning and kayaking, you can do in Switzerland. I mean, there's a lot of adventure things you can do. And what's nice is we're doing you're doing these adventure trips. You're together. A lot of times when you do adventure stuff, you got to do some stuff together. So it takes teamwork sometimes. So you're working together, but it gives you another experience. That's these things is sometimes we just need new experiences with our friends. Because even if we've been with these friends for the last two years stuck together, um, sometimes you're like, okay, I've heard all your stories. We need new stories. So these are things that can help you out. Okay. Now, another thing I think would be helpful, another idea you can have is, is one, you can look at food trips. And food trips, they can go different ways. They're, food trip, as in you can go and take a course and a class and learn how to do it. Like I know uh, plenty of firms in, in Costa Rica and Italy and even Japan where they like, you come and we'll teach you how to cook local food for the whole week. Or you can just go for a day or an afternoon and that gives you, it's kind of like an event thing, but it's more food focused for that. But also with the number of food tours you have in cities around the world, I mean, even small towns, smaller cities, larger towns have these food tours and you can have something you can go around. You have someone that's kind of dictating the conversation that can really help you out. OK, so so that that's really nice. And I think one of the things is when you're looking at food tours, sometimes it's really good. Either one, go to a place where it's all new foods to you or a place that's famous for its food. So like New York City, New Orleans, Paris, um, going to, you know, even Rome or someplace or going to Tokyo you have these places where you get to have this really great food tour. It's just experimenting with food. And sometimes the best part of trying new food is just going in the supermarkets and seeing that. So that's kind of cool. But the food stuff, I mean, that's one thing I see when I talk to friends. We'll talk about the food we had on some of our old trips, you know. And that's why if you go on Jocelyn's channel, the Simply Jocelyn channel, uh, we have all kinds of what to eat when you go to different destinations because that's something we talk about later. So uh, we don't have the food videos on Walter's World so much anymore. They're, they're over there. So you want to check that out. Today, we just put out the uh, What to Eat in Chicago video. So that can help you out there. Um, now, another kind of trip you could go on with uh, friends. And this is one where it's more of a traditional kind of culture trip, traditional vacation. This is you're going to Paris to go to the Louvre, to go to Musée d'Orsay, you know, to, to sit at the cafe. You have those. Because sometimes... Right now, I've seen people that are kind of tipping their toes back into international travel. And I, I don't blame them. For a lot of people, it's been a really tough, I mean, for all of us, it's been a tough couple of years. And for the travel thing to go back full in, sometimes it's a little harder. I know we have a trip, we usually take, you know, about a six week trip in the six, well, six to nine week trip in the summer uh, straight through. This year we're doing, we're doing separate trips. So Jocelyn's doing one now, I'm doing one later, then we go for three weeks for, for another one. And we're kind of breaking it up so because it's just a lot to take in. And so when you're doing a culture trip, you know, I really think it's a nice idea to look at places and research them before you go so you can get the most out of it. Like, I always wanted to learn more about Japan. You know, so I'm going to focus on learning about Japanese culture as a place I'm going to go. And if I go with my friends, we're all learning together. That's why sometimes, which sounds funny, but, you know, you've seen all these things over the last two years for like Babbel and LingoPie and Duolingo about learning languages. Here's the thing, those, all those apps can help you learn. I'm not gonna diss them because you know what? They can help people learn. But if you get a chance to go and do a culture trip and do a language and culture class, I've done that before in Argentina with Spanish and Brazil with Portuguese and in Italy with Italian. I mean, I basically went from speaking no Italian in two weeks of a culture immersion thing. I could speak middling, like, you know, sixth grader Italian. And so you can do that, which is nice. So something to kind of think about when you're looking at things. And that's one thing your friend and you can go together and you kind of grow together and learn together. So that's nice. And then, then there's, you know, the, um, it's a, a version of the event trip, but it could be a shopping trip. Um, you know, cause some people like to just go shopping, you know, whether, you know, I know I have friends that will go to New York just for a shopping trip or, or for the holidays. They go, we're going to New York, do Christmas shopping and see that you can have that. Uh, the, I have friends that do hunting trips. I know for my, my father, Every every fall, they, they have Daviv and all of his buddies that they've been hunting together for, I don't know, 50, 60 years. 
they get back together. Now, I mean, honestly, now they go and maybe like two of the like 15 guys that are still around still hunt. Like they mostly like they just go watch and go, and, but they get together and they talk. And I think that's one of the things that's really breaking my heart, seeing how people have not been able to be together uh, the last two years. And we're having such a hard time reintegrating together and re-talking about it to each other and re-traveling with each other. That's why I want to kind of go through some of these tips for you. And for those of you watching this video, you know, the replay, then you get the main thing I want to talk about. And I want to allude back to them as we go uh, through the vid through the live feed today, because I'm going to go answer your questions. But I wanted to give people these ideas to help them get out and get out and travel with your friends again. Because believe me, you have missed your friends. You might not realize you missed your friends, but you have missed your friends. And once you're with them again, you're like, damn, I miss them. Like I'm almost tearing up thinking about like how much it meant to me to see my buddy Magnus, who I haven't seen since 2019, you know, like since the summer before all the craziness happened. So something to really talk about. All right. So now I want to say hi to the people that are on here. So very nice to see. Nick was the first one on here. Good to see you, Nick and Mark. Esther is in the house. Good to see you. Kerrigan, good to see you as well. Rob from Trebex, DC. Always a pleasure. Brandon, hello from Chicago. So Brandon, remember, Eats of Chicago is on Jocelyn's channel right now. Oh, that's nice. Esther, the boyfriend has a boy's trip from mid-May to Columbia. Perfect. Like these are little things you got to do. Even if it's just going away for a day. It can make a big difference. I know my buddy Jeff and I, we're going to go. There's there's a German restaurant a couple hours north of here. And we're just going to go to just go eat together. Like just for that like time. And it's, you know, a two-hour drive up there. Then you figure eat for a couple hours and you drive back. But that's six hours you're actually dedicating to them because you're not sitting on your phone. You're, you're, you're really having some. So that's really nice. Scott Bradbury, good to see you. The family as well. Family as well. Yeah, see, April, Mark Finley's daughter, she's going with her friends on a, on a cruise to help bond together. So there's a nice, there's a nice thing there. Oh, Tom's already gone. Hey, Tom, good to see you. Davey, boys, will you be my friend, Mark? I'm hell, I'm always friendly to all the fellow travelers out there. Don't worry. King of Robot, good to see you. Austin, Texas, fun time. Good food. My God, such good food there. Uh, I've got my Irish... Irish breakfast tea, you really have to put the cream in there. I don't have any Irish dairy cream, but like I actually put whipping cream in here. Yeah, you know, that's really helpful for the diet, but whatever. Yeah, have that. Oh, here's one, Kangaroo Robot. Talking about sports, I recommend you and the family head out to Hong Kong for the Rugby Sevens Tournament when you can. It's awesome. This is a great example. Sometimes you go to events you don't even know about. Like, I didn't even know these things are actual sporting events. Or you go to countries where you don't realize a sport is so popular. You know, like, I mean, I knew when I went to Australia, it was rugby and there's Australian Rules football. And I went to see that. But then when I was in school there, I played ring ball, which was only for women. But since I was an exchange student, they let me play to learn how to play it. You know, it was like kind of a really interesting thing. And if you go to places where you're not sure how the sport is, you know, if you're, you know, a lot of Europeans, they come to the U.S. and they watch American football, like, what the hell is going on? You can learn about it. You learn about the culture. The same thing is when you go to a soccer match in Europe and you're from the U.S. It's like it's such a growing experience. Or, or my personal favorite, going to like the, the minor league games. That's where you really learn. They always have fun stuff going on. So, so there is that. So, Miles K. Hey, Mark. Hey, Miles. I was wondering if you're thinking of traveling to Asia anytime soon. South Korea and Hong Kong are great, especially for the kids. Yes. Yeah, so, South Korea and Hong Kong are on our list of places to go. Um obviously how things have been the last couple of years. That's why we haven't. I've gotten actually quite a few mean comments lately about um, not being in Asia the last couple of years. I'm like, I couldn't go. Uh, I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> I will travel all around the U.S. and some Europe stuff, but because we could get there. But, you know, yes, yeah, South Korea is definitely on there. For those who didn't know, my dad actually worked in South Korea for a number of years, and my mom and I are still pissed off with him because he never took us. The best part was, is after he retired, he's like, oh, yeah, I could have took you guys all the time. They would have shown you around. It'd be like two weeks, and I would have left you with people. They would have taken you and have a great time. And we're like, thanks. Thanks for nothing, Dad. So, yeah, my mom and I are still bitter about that. But, uh, yeah, no, we'll get to, we'll get to South Korea. Uh, it was funny. Like, we had an Israel trip that got canceled literally last minute, like the, like the night before we were flying out. And we had an option to do South Korea, but we had to leave the next morning. Or it was like go to Aruba for, like, four or five days. And at that time, that was like, that was 2019. And I had traveled so much. I was so just burned out of like everything. I'm like, I couldn't do the videos right. Cause I literally had not, I mean, I didn't even have a South Korea book, you know? So it was like, 
I, I wouldn't do it right. I wouldn't do it justice without it. I mean, it wasn't cool, but it was like, we were all just like, even the kids were like, can we just do a short trip? So we, we did like five days in Aruba. So, but yeah, no, both those places are on the list place we're going to go. Don't you worry about that. Oh yeah. Esther has a good point. Food festivals. Like this is one thing in your hometowns. A lot of towns will have like restaurant week or they'll have, you know, like my hometown in Quincy, Illinois has a, you know, a little festival, a, a dogwood festival with a parade and some little things going on, but that gets you a chance to get out. Cause just getting out with your friends again goes a long way to helping us here and here. Okay. Um, Vinny wants to know how long would you suggest for Belgium? Belgium, eh, 10 days. I mean, you could do Br um, Antwerp, Ghent, Bruges. Those are the top three for me. And then, you know, a day in, in Brussels, you know, so you can, you can get a lot of stuff in that time. Um, nice. Hey, Trish, good to see you. Trish's Kitchen, culture trip coming up in May with Viking River Cruises. Yeah, I like, I mean, River Cruises, I like River Cruises for the fact that you're in the city, and especially if you're in Europe. So for those of you who don't know, you know, you have the big, huge, like, Caribbean cruise lines that hold, like, thousands of people. But if you look at European river cruises or if you're looking at, like, China has some really great river cruises as well. If you want to go there, there are only, like, hundreds of people. Or you can get in small boat ones, which are, like, dozens of people. And it has a very different experience. But river cruises are really nice. My parents have done a number of Beacon Line cruises, and they like them. Beacon's never reached out to us to work with us. But um, uh, they've enjoyed that because you're really, like, in town so you're like oh i can walk off and i'm in the downtown not you know when you take the cruise and it says you're going to rome on the big you know mediterranean cruises you're not in rome you're in the port and then you got like a drive into the town and so that can be much inga labas kipsakasi let's see hey in japan So Dennis wants to know if I can give him some advice for military flights, retired military. So I have some friends that actually do do that quite often. They will actually stay on bases when they travel. Um, I have not worked with them on anything, so I don't know a lot myself. But I know there's actually bloggers that focus just on this. So what I would do is look up military travel for retired military. And there will be a ton of stuff there. there is. So Ronnie Dove in the house. Good to see you, buddy. So Eagle, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to like hide you for a while because you can't comment 400 times, but uh, what do you think about Egypt? Yes, uh, we will be going to Egypt um, 2023. That's, that's the plan. We're, we're going to be there for that. That's the place I've wanted to go forever. It's actually where I wanted to go when I finished my PhD. That's my, like going to be my gift to myself, but then the whole family and a new baby made it like, you know, crazy. So we haven't got there yet, but we will, we will. Egypt is a definite for me. That's one thing I want to go to. Let's see. So Zach heading on a trip in late July, playing for 10 days in Lisbon, Valencia, and Barcelona. Is that a good amount of time, more or less? With that many, with that many days, I would just do those three cities because you're not going to have time for some side trips. I mean, you could do like a day trip in Lisbon. You go up to Sintra or you go to the beach to Lisbon for a day. Like you could do that. Valencia, you've got all the stuff right there. Uh, Barcelona, you can go to some of the beach towns nearby for a day, but you can just go to the city beaches in Barcelona. <sighs> yeah, I know. Five days in Aruba, what a tough life. I'll be honest with you, I didn't like Aruba. People were nice, but it was too damn expensive. And basically it was, uh, I saw more Tom Brady jerseys because he was still with the Patriots um, than I saw anything else. I saw Patriot flags, New York Giants flags everywhere. So it didn't feel like the Caribbean, like when you go to Jamaica, or even the Cayman Islands or Puerto Rico. I mean, it was just, I don't know. Anyway, so let's see. Oh, no, Leo. I was supposed to be in Cartagena coming right now, but my wife tested positive for COVID. Yeah, that is, that is one thing that's tough because you have that. I know we were, we were supposed to be in Hawaii last year. Well, yeah, last year we were supposed to be in Hawaii at this time, and one of us tested positive. So it was like instead of Hawaii for two weeks, we were – Quarantined at home, and it sucks. Oh, for those now, Leo's got a fun Instagram channel where he shows like just like the time lapse stuff uh, of different places around the world. So it's kind of fun if you want to check it out. It's so. Let's see. Victor, a lot of that's fun. The Camino de Santiago. A lot of people asked me about this lately too. So the Camino de Santiago. For those who don't know, it's actually a, a walking path. It's a hike that goes through from France into Spain to Santiago de Compostela, which is in the 
northwest corner of Spain. Santiago is worth going to see it yourself. The Camino is a walk for uh, devout Catholics that, that go, and, and there's like huts you can stay along the way. Um, I've only done the very last bit of it when I was in Santiago, and it was a cool experience because you meet so many people. You'll see people with do- going with donkeys and their staff and stuff, so it's kind of a cool thing. Oh, Pedro. Pedro. Sonny from Lisbon. Yeah, so I'm supposed to be – I might be at Web Summit this year in November, um, so I get to go to Lisbon for a little while, but I'm probably going to take a group of students to Lisbon in 2023 um, for because I teach a class abroad, and so it'll probably be there. So I, I will I will be there. I miss it. it. You know, you live in some place for five years, it stays with you forever. I mean, that's where our youngest son was born in Lisbon, so. Let's see. Hey, Casper in Oregon, good to see you. So, mail care, you make lots of videos. Yes, I do. Out in public in a vast variety of cultures, yes. Any funny, interesting stories? And also, have you noticed cultural differences regarding reaction to your street video? Yeah, so, like, Japan, everybody totally ignored me like we didn't exist. That There was that. Um, in Swiss, Switzerland was a place where the most people messed with me. So, this is, like, when we first started, like, years ago, like, I'm like skinny in those videos. I don't even know if they're on the Walters World channel. They might be like on like one of my old channels that don't work anymore. I don't know. But um, it was like every time I filmed, the people would walk and they like look at my camera from behind. And then they'd be like, one, two, three, four. Ha, ha. And I'm like, dude, really? Like, it, But it was like constant in Switzerland. Like everywhere. So I ended up having to go out on a lake at the end of a pier at like eight in the morning on a Tuesday and a work week <laughs> to get out there to do stuff. Um, let's see. Well, one thing is I always like when fans will come by because like I'll see people that look at me and then I'll put up my tripod because for those who don't know, we don't have a cameraman or a camera woman. We just have a tripod and a camera on top of it. And so I'll set up my stuff and I'll just start talking and people will be like, they'll look at me like, oh, that's, you know, and then, you know, the, the, the one, like I can see them when I come chat, but I'm talking, I'm like, oh, I'm like, hey, what's up? How are you? And we'll chat for a bit. So it's funny because some videos I'll have, like the video will be 20 minutes long, but it's actually like 10 minutes of me talking because I'm talking 10 minutes to people come and say hi. So, so that's really nice. But overall, people have been very supportive. I haven't had too many problems. I've had the police a few times, like in Beijing, I had that. And then in my grandma's hometown, um, I was there once filming and i had i didn't have my tripod so i just had the camera literally on the top of the car and the police came they're like yeah we had a report of a crazy man talking to himself on the square i'm like i'm like see the camera here's me talking Uh, i'm doing a video about promoting your town he's like oh well i still need to make a police report so in carlinville illinois there's a police report about mark walters so yeah Oh, Gretchen, that's awesome. She's going with her sister for the first time or for her sister's first time in Europe. And that's just it. Like, that's one thing I really love. That's why I like taking my students abroad if I get a chance to. Is some have never been abroad before. So it's their first time abroad and it's such a great, like, impactful experience. That's wonderful to be a part of that. So I'm really great you're doing that with your sister. That's awesome. Let's see. Ah, yes. The biggest problem with traveling with friends. How do you figure out the budget? Here's the deal. You have to have that conversation before you go. The thing is, is that's one thing people are the most embarrassed about is budgets. You know, I, I travel with a number of different friends with a wide range of budgets. I'm kind of like, my budget's like a middle, I'm I'm a middle class traveler, okay? I don't stay in high-end hotels. I don't eat the fancy restaurants. I eat at like nice, nice, nice restaurants, but nice middle-class restaurants. Sometimes we'll go cheap, you know, because you got to save the money. But like where we stay and I have friends that are like, I want to stay at a five star hotel. I'm like, dude, I'm not paying. I'm not paying a, a plane ticket for a hotel night, you know. And so I have these conversations with them. And and actually, I have one friend. I mean, he's better now, but he used to be extremely cheap. Like if you had a French fry of his, he'd be like, well, you got to pay for some of the French fries. And that got annoying. Like and that like. We stopped traveling with, I stopped traveling with him for a little while because it just got too annoying. Now he's better, so we're we're okay. But I had a kind of a conversation with him, like, dude, we're not, we can't do this. And that's what you have to do. You say, look, here's what we're gonna say. What 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 are people's budgets? You know, like when I like I I have traveled with some friends and I know they don't have as much, and I get all these free companion passes with all the traveling I do. So I'll be like, hey, buddy, you, you want to come with me? Like, I'll pay for your ticket and I'll get the hotel. 
and then you just pay for your food. So I'll find ways to help out if I can. Um, but it really comes down to having that discussion beforehand because I cannot tell you how many people have written us over the years, how that has been a real like nail in the coffin to friendships because traveling with friends can ruin a friendship too. That's why it's important. Like you have friends, like if you're like doubtful, you should travel with that friend. You probably shouldn't. Um, or you need to think about where you're going to go. Cause like one thing is if I know I have friends that don't have as, as much money, um, I'll be, I'll, the destinations I'll say, let's go to, we're going to be different. You know, like if I, I have friends, I'm like, okay, let's, let's think of some cheaper place to travel. If we're going to go to Europe. I'm like, oh, let's go to Ireland or Portugal or Spain or, or, you know, or Italy or something. And I have friends that are like, a little more affluent. I'm like, oh, well then we can do a higher end version of that. Or we can go to Denmark or Norway or Sweden, you know? So something to think about when you're there. So something there. So we have a new member, Vinny. Welcome to the team, Vinny. So Vinny, if you go on to the community tab, there should be a little thing on there and you can go to the superheroes. Um, and I'll tell you about our superheroes Facebook group because we do a uh, live every month with just the fans. So instead of me trying to talk a thousand miles an hour, it's me spending more time answering your individual questions. So cool. Uh, I have a PhD in management and I teach marketing. So. Zachary the God, you're back. What's up, buddy? Yes, you asked this before. Yes, there will be more Asia and Africa videos. Um, I know 2023 for Africa, we've got uh, Egypt, Kenya, Ethiopia planned. Uh, for, for for Africa, we have that. For Asia, I guess there is Jordan and Israel, which are te technically in Asia, but they go for the European like soccer stuff. Um, and then I don't know if we're going to get to South. I hope to get to Southeast Asia. In 2023, like Thailand, Cambodia, Laos. I'm just trying. I'm trying to figure out our schedule because a lot depends on the kids and how their school schedules are. And schools don't let their schedules out, you know, two years in advance. So I'm kind of basing it off the last couple of years to see when exams are and things like that. So, so we'll have that one. Let's see. Oh, oh, sorry, I just lost. Where'd he go? There's Vinny. So thank you very much, Vinny, for becoming a member. You are the best. We appreciate it. Oh, super chat. Thank you, Jorgen. Jorgen, 1990. Um, hi, Mark. Honeymooning near Santa Monica, Marina del Rey in three weeks. What do you suggest? Love your channel. Keep it up. Okay, so I, I like two months ago, I put out a bunch of LA videos, and there's one, the don'ts of Venice Beach. Uh, the, Venice Beach is very different than Santa Monica. Okay, I'll tell you that one right now. And Marina del Rey. Okay, so just, just, just there's definitely a difference there. Um, one thing is, go if you're down by Santa Monica, you can actually the the metro actually goes down there, so you can hop on there to get if you want to go into town because it'll actually get to some of the sites. Especially even if you're going to go like Disney or something like that, if you take the uh, the metro in from Santa Monica, you can save yourself a bunch of cash. Get out you know downtown or closer to out by there, and then you can Uber out to it. Uh, one thing I would say if you're ever going to go to any of the parks, like Knott's Berry Farm is one I like to go to, but if you go to Disney or Universal Studios, if you're going to go stay there late night or later in the evening, schedule your Uber before because there's not always a lot of Ubers that are out there. So it might be, you have, might have to wait a long time to get it. But if you schedule it, you know it's there waiting for you. So that would be something I'd say. Um, the homeless situation out there has gotten better, but it's still, there's issues. Santa Monica is not really too much, but you know, you, you leave the people alone, they'll leave you alone. So that'll be fine there. But yeah, no, congratulations. It's awesome. On the, on the, on the coming nuptials and honeymoon. Cool. Ah, uh, question. There are talks about airlines making childless flights. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, I think that's BS. Um, people pay for their kids to be on the flights. And last time I checked, it was adults that were getting arrested and thrown off planes for being jerks, not little kids. So that's why when people were, you know, total jerks to us with our kids when they were little and our kids were good travelers, they still are. And people were like, oh, they did so well. I'm like, yeah, they did better than you because they weren't jerks. So I think that's kind of crap. And also, I don't think that would stand up in court because you're taking away the rights of a citizen to travel. And uh, unless it's like strippers and it should be 18 or older or 21 or older, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not I'm not cool with that. I know babies and kids can be annoying, but you know what? I've had way more annoying adults on planes than I've had kids on planes. So. Ooh, Courtney. If you're ready, reading this, my husband, and I stayed in the 11th to help Mr. One Dancer. The 11th Ring does month in Paris and loved it. Not as tourist to more of local scenes right by the Bastille. Yeah, that's the thing is, one thing when people write me like, we want to stay by the Eiffel Tower. You don't want to stay by the Eiffel Tower. You want to go stay in neighborhoods. Okay, like we always stay in Montmartre. That's our go-to for, I mean, we're going on 10 years now of always staying. Oh, shoot, no. 15 years. Oh, time's flying. Uh, of going there. Like my mom and I are staying in Montmartre a couple times next month. So, so there is that. Um, 
I got I have the same budget problem with my life. <laughs> Guys, just got the humor. Got the humor. Got the jokes. I like it. Uh, Victor, love your videos, but of course, thank you. I've got a couple more coming out. Um, unfortunately, my editing team, I had a love and hates of Ecuador and how it was set up. We got the wrong B roll, so I got to redo it. So there's that. And then there's the don'ts of Ecuador. Uh, that one is a brand new editor and I have a lot to work, work on it. So those will be coming out probably either May or June. So there'll be two more Ecuador videos coming. And Ecuador is really nice for those who want to go and see like all the micro climates of the world, Ecuador is a place to go. Like if you are a, you know, a world schooler for your kids doing your, just go to Ecuador and you will have all their ecology stuff done. It was an incredible experience. Ah, Floripa, Florinopolis. That's a town in Southern Brazil, which is beautiful. Um, you get a lot of meat there too. I have friends that are from down there. I had a lot of friends from Floripa when I lived in Lisbon. Um, the, I don't know if we're going to get there on our next Brazil trip because our next Brazil trip, depending on how the kids' school works, we'll either be down there for two weeks, well, a little bit more than two weeks, or we'll be there for like 10 days. Um, it just depends on how school is. Um, so we want to go see our, our family in Brazil because my I lived in Brazil and my the family I lived with, their son lived with my family too. So we're like tight. Uh, she passed away last year and, and we haven't been able to get down there to, to pay our respects. So we're going to go down and see them in Sao Paulo, my, my host dad that was there. And then we're going to go down to hopefully Floripa and Santa Catarina and uh, Puerto Alegre down there for a bit too. So hopefully we'll be down there. Do you like visit Brazil? I love Brazil. Eu adoro. Amo. Amo Brazil. É um país maravilhoso. Tem que visitar. Tem que visitar. You gotta visit it. It's a beautiful country. So Bobby Johnson, Istanbul. That is on our list as well. That has been canceled because of COVID twice, uh, which sucks. So hopefully we'll get down there relatively soon. I think, I think we might do Istanbul when we do our Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Ethiopia. I think we might tie that in all together and kind of get that area there. So, so. Ah, uh, yes. Where would you go on a six and a half hour Heathrow layover? Uh, I go into town. I used to actually have layovers like that. I So for those that know, I used to work in Lithuania. I worked there for three and a half years. I taught and did consulting. And when I go visit my family, how the flights were to connections back to Lithuania, I you know, you get in from the U.S. at like eight in the morning. And then my flight home, like to home to Lithuania was like at five in the afternoon, four in the afternoon. So I would just go in, have lunch with a friend of mine at Canary Wharf, you know, and then go and see a couple of sites then head back to the airport. Um, one thing I will tell you, if you're going to be doing that, I would take the Heathrow Express in. It costs more money than taking the tube, but you're like in the center of London in like 15, 20 minutes versus an hour and a half on the tube. Okay. So that's going to help you out just do, doing a return for that. Cause you can get into, I, well, I think the Heathrow Express still goes to Victoria. I'm not sure. You got to check which one it goes to again. I will find out cause I'm going to be in London in a little while. Um, but then you can, you know, hit up the buck, you know, just walk around, take some stuff in, have lunch and then head back to the airport. Um, yeah. So then that's also one thing is anytime you're going to have a long layer of this, think about that when you're packing. Cause sometimes like I usually like to go carry on only, but sometimes if I have like a layover like this, even though I'm carry on only, I will actually check my carry on size bag just so I don't have to lug it around London for six hours. I can just walk around normal. Um, yeah. And also look for, you can also look for like a left luggage at some airports uh, where you can just leave your bags at the airport. I know Amsterdam has one of those. I've used that, I don't know, 10 times where I'm like, I don't want to deal with this. I'll come back and get it later. <sighs> Day trip from New York. Hmm. Philadelphia or Boston. You can take the train a couple hours. So if you take the early morning train, like the early, like the 6 a.m. train, you, 6, 7, 8, 8, there's a lot. There's like trains every hour, every other hour. You can be there in a couple hours, spend the whole day there and take an evening train back. So, and that's, I think, one people don't realize. The U.S. does have a train system that you can use. Uh, we have a dunce of, of, your, of U.S. trains. We'll have a dunce of European trains coming up soon, too. Um, but I think it's important that people remember, hey, we've got all these options out there. You can make a day trip that you think is going to be too far, not too far. So, and especially if you get up early enough, because that that eastern corridor of the U.S. from Boston to D.C., there's trains all the time. I, I took that with my mom. Uh, we went from Philadelphia to D.C. It was easy, like so easy. You're welcome, Jordan. 
Maria, or Mariah, sorry. Hi, Mark. How do you win in Portugal for two weeks in August? Woohoo! Any recommendations for Lisbon, Port of Douro Valley River? Okay. Um, Lisbon, day trips. Sintra is the one most people go to that has the cool looking castles. Another good one is Evera. Um, you can take a train or a bus there. It's really easy to get to. My favorite one is Obidus. Um, I have videos on all those places. Problem is Obidus, you got to drive or get a ride there or something because it's like you got to connect. It's a pain doing it with the with the bus. Um, you can do a tour of it, but I don't like those kind of those tours because they get you a lot of places along the way. So easy train, bus kind of things, Centra or Evera when you're there. Um, eat, uh, let's see, August. Um, I like pork, but to black pork. That's really good. Uh, but you have so much fish. There's so much food. I'll have a, by August, there'll be uh, a couple of food videos out on Jocelyn, Simply Jocelyn channel that I made about food in Portugal that can help you out. In Porto, you're going to go to a bunch of port wine caves. Um, so you can enjoy those. There's, there's a lot of them there. Um, and they're free to go. In. Most of them are, well, maybe pay a little bit, but you get to try the different wine, the different port wine. So that's cool. Um, remember your, your limitation, how much you can bring back. I think there's two of you going, so there's four bottles you can bring back. Um, but a lot of the good port, Portuguese wine, you don't have to pay a lot for. Portuguese wine, honestly, Portuguese wine, the best price quality ratio is probably the best in the world. So, so Bari is one of the places we're looking at going in uh, this summer. So I have not been personally, so I cannot give you anything like that. So. Hi, Mark. I'm traveling from England to all 33 countries in the year in Europe. Uh, any tips work? Be nice. Yeah, actually, Michael, you have the best tip. Be nice. Anywhere you travel, be nice. People will be nice to you. Like, this is one thing I always get, like, upset with people when they're like, oh, this country, they're just bad people. They're bad. They're, I'm like, no, they're not. Like, I've traveled the world, and people are good people all over. You can find good people, and you can find jerks everywhere, too. So if you're nice, most likely you're going you're gonna to meet some nice people, too. Yes, uh, looking to take the kids to Denmark, uh, maybe spring break 2023. I think that's that's the that's the plan, at least right now, for, for that. But again, I like it's one of those things I gotta wait till the next school calendar comes out. And they don't send that out until like July, so we will find out. Ah, yes, John Anderson, rock beer, smoked beer. Yes, it does taste like it tastes more like pork rinds than bacon, but um. Uh, the first half you have is like weird. And then you're like, I remember the first time I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this. And I'm like, this is okay. And I'm like, I love this. I want it forever. It's actually a go-to birthday gift that all my, uh, my friends give me. So yeah, it, it's worth doing. Let's see. Oh, Mariah. Oh, hi, Mark. How do you win in Portugal? Okay. So I answered your question, Mariah. So I hope that helped out that I answered before, even without the super chat, but thank you very much for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. It does help us uh, make these videos. And for all those members and patrons out there, I cannot tell you, and all the people with the super chats, I cannot tell you how much that helps us being able to do these videos and make these videos and keep making these videos. Because as everyone knows, travel isn't cheap and it's not free. You know, I know all those points guys and all they're like, oh, how to see the world for free. And it's like, look, if you got to spend $3,000 on a credit card to get the points, it's not free. Okay. So your support goes a long way. So all those, the super chats, all those members, all those members on Patreon, you know, patreon.com slash Walters World. I, I can't say thank you enough because you all help us do this and keep making these honest travel videos. So thank you. Okay, Maxwell. So for the Heathrow Express, it's Paddington Station now. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Hey, Tyler, good to see you again. Yes, we'll be getting to Egypt. Don't worry. Andrea, I, I, I've, yes, I lived in Brazil. I lived in Sao Paulo. I've been all over Brazil. I've taken my family there multiple times. I've taken my parents there multiple times. So, yes, love Brazil. Adoramo Brazil. Let's see. Okay, so Sray Taran. Hi, Walter. Hi. <laughs> which travel groups? It's Mark, by the way. Uh, which travel groups would you recommend for solo travelers? Here's the thing. There are so many travel companies now that actually focus on individual travels was before it's like your group travel or you're screwed or you're a couple or you're a, you know whatever it depends where you're going to go um in, in your age group because there is solo older travelers and there's solo younger traveler trips and they're very different so it depends what you want to do um i don't have any rough like i don't have any off the top of my head to like give you specific because i don't know enough about you but i would just look at like put in your demographic like hey you know like i'm like okay male middle-aged trip 
solo traveler Europe and, and see what comes up. So Bulgaria, also a trip that was destroyed because of COVID. We will get there. Don't worry. Hey, Snoopy Forever. Good to see you. Ooh, Nazia. Okay. We're, thank you very much for the super chat. We're taking a week-long New England road trip. Very cool. So far, plans on Providence, Rhode Island, Boston, and up to Portland. Any other must-see cities? Okay. So if you're going to be going by Providence, you can hit up Mystic, Connecticut on the way. Um, Mystic's got the Mystic Seaport, which is like an 18th, 18th century. Uh, 18? Yeah, I think 18th. 18th century seaport they've redone it's actually the most visited place in connecticut that's worth doing there's some great food there as well uh, just north of there there's a pequot museum which is probably one of the best native american museums anywhere like it's incredible like they have like it looks like real people and they built an entire native american village there it's fantastic if you look up my don'ts of mystic connecticut video it'll tell you a lot about that um, Providence, when you're in Providence, you want to go have Portuguese food. There's actually a large Portuguese immigration immigrant population there, and they have fantastic Portuguese food. Um, Boston, I got plenty of Boston videos. Boston's so much history when you're out there. When you're going up to Portland, Portland's okay, but a lot of people like to start from Bar, Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor is a popular stopping place, but Acadia National Park is one you got to do. So I hope that helps you out. Oh, Ryan Dada. Hey, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Okay, Heidi, headed to Ireland, end of May. Do you have any suggestions for a first day getting off a red eye to Dublin? Um, one thing I would do is probably book your hotel the night before, even though you you get in early morning. Um, then the hotel's waiting for you, so you can go drop off your stuff so you can like and shower, get cleaned up, so you can actually enjoy that tired day. Um, I would probably, if you're staying downtown in Dublin, I would just try to do, I, I do more a walk around day or you know go see the university go, you know, into the, the history museum, you know, walk around, take stuff in, get a feel for it. I mean, you can go to St. Patrick's Cathedral. And then, so it's kind of like get your bearings kind of day, hit the shopping pedestrian streets, you know, hit a pub and get something and then go back and crash just to get some sleep. Okay. Um, at like seven, eight o'clock at night. So you're back. And then you can hit the ground running the next day. That, that would be my stuff. So Indiana home flying O'Hare, which has an $8.5 billion upgrade coming. Uh, I have the points to fly business class for two. Is it worth the points in your opinion or just go economy? Love the shows and help you offer. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. So one thing I would say, um, that, <coughs> that that actually flight isn't bad. That's actually a decent flight. It's I think it's like seven hours. So it's not like super horrible in terms of the length of it. So that's cool. Um, here's one thing I always tell people with points. Use them. Because if you save them and collect them, they kind of lose value. Because remember, way back in the day, it was like fly to Europe round trip for 50,000 points or anywhere in the US for 25,000 round trip. Now it's like 46,000 for one way to Chicago from St. Louis. Like you want to use those. A lot of times, what they'll say is the best way to do it is to, to buy the upgrade with it. Like Jocelyn, her Greece trip, she upgraded her just her part from Atlanta to Europe. She used like 26,000 miles, just upgrade to like premium select which is not first class it's the one right below uh just to have the extra lay down like that was a good use of her points so that's one thing is because like collecting your points doesn't help you it doesn't give you anything anymore which is sad so use them i know we used to fly with united and i had hundreds of thousands of points and i'm like okay i should use some of these and i would give it like by, like use it like a companion pass hey i'm gonna go here you want to come with me i'll buy your tickets with my with my points but eventually i'm like i stopped using them because of various things people on here know that um, and then I was just like, well, screw it. And I actually ended up buying Christmas gifts. I think it was Christmas, like 2015. I bought Christmas gifts for everybody in my family with my points. So use them is a good idea. So yeah. <coughs> Don't forget the siblings. Yeah. Well, sometimes we forget our siblings. <laughs> Plan together the sisters to see my dad in Korea during Thanksgiving. That's awesome. Yeah. That's another thing is traveling with, because my brother and I have traveled a few times together and the first time we, we, we really can't, I mean, we were too, we were young and, you know, we, yeah. Then we traveled again later in life. It worked a lot better. So uh, that, that's one thing. So Kyle, there's actually a train that goes between there. I would just take the train. You can do the train bus. We've driven it. So, so we have that. Oh, KB Designs Canada. Thank you very much for the super chat. I will look and see if you have a question. Here it is. Thank you for the super chat. 
We were traveling Europe by cruise ship. We were using local tour companies for the major ports to sample sea areas. Any suggestions for these ports? Vigo, Spain, La Coruña, Spain, Bilbao, Spain. Okay, so KB Design Canada is doing some cool stuff because what you have to realize is when you go on a cruise, they have their own expeditions, their own experiences, their own tours, right? And of course you pay for those and it's you and everybody else on the trip going on. I like to use local guides in the place I go to hire a local person to do it. And then it's just me and Josh and me and the boys going because then they only answer my question. I'm actually actually working on a video right now, when to hire a private guide. And one of the reasons why you hired is to avoid the problems of everybody else. Now, when they have to realize if you hire a private guy when you're on a cruise and you're late, they'll leave without you. If you're on the group tour with the thing and the, the, the tour company, like the cruise company stuff's late, they wait for them because that's the cruise company's people. So you got to be careful with that. Um, in terms of Vigo and La Coruña, La Coruña, you want to see the, the, the windows on the water. Uh, that's the big thing there. I've been there. I was there a few years ago. Um, there was that Vigo. There's not a lot. Like I, I think doing a, having a local tour company take you around might be better for Vigo and La Coruña because there's not a ton there and they can bring, bring out some more stuff for you in Bilbao. There's so many things in Bilbao, like from the museums, to the, the food, that that's one thing people don't understand. Like, um, Basque food is incredible and it's so different than than like Spanish food or whatever. So if you can do like a food tour when you're in Bilbao, that's one thing I'd recommend. So I hope that helps. So Eric Smart, good to see you. Stephen T, wife and I are in Tuscany, July 20 to 26. Lucky dog. Want to visit Florence, Luca, and a quick visit to Venice. We need to be in system 27. What would you do? Okay. Um 20, 21st, 21st. So you got seven days. I would probably fly into Venice. I don't know if you don't have your tickets already. Thank you for the super chat. Um, I would fly into Venice, do that first, and then take the train because there's a direct train from Venice to Florence. Um, but I would probably stay in Luca and then do a day trip to Florence, a half half day, half day trip to Pisa. Um, because Florence, you just get so overrun with the other tourists that are there, and Luca is gotten a lot more popular, but it's still a little more manageable. And it's just a local train going back and forth. Um, I would kind of do that. And then, because you can go from Florence down to Sicily on the train, or you can fly from Pisa down, okay? Because there's cheap airlines from Pisa and Florence. It'll go down to Sicily. Um, I'm actually doing a similar trip uh, this summer as well. And we're going down to Sicily too. But we're taking a train down because we're going, because we go Venice and then we're down in Luca and Florence. And then we're doing, we're not hitting, we're hitting Rome on the way back up. Then we go from there to the Amalfi Coast and Naples. Then we go down to Sicily. Then we come back up to Rome, finish off there and fly out. So I don't know if that helped. I hope it did. So uh, there's that. Oh, unique username. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Oh, nice. I'm going to Bariloche on the, in the summer. Have you ever been there? Yes, I have been. So for those who don't know, Bariloche is in Argentina and it's a very popular, it's, a, it's in the mountains. Uh, it's a popular ski resort. A lot of Brazilians come there. They call it Brasil Loche sometimes because it's all there. But um, if you look at some of our Argentina videos, you see like wilderness and lakes and stuff. That's there. Um, and then I, I highly recommend it. Uh, you'll eat well because it's lots of steaks and stuff. Um, but it's like have hiking boots. Like do do some of the hikes that are there and bring your swimsuit because the lakes that are there. So, And the water's a little chilly, just so you know. Um, Eric B. in the house. So Eric, also fun traveler. If you go check out his channel, he's got all kinds of stuff all around the U.S., all around the world uh, for his perspective. Um, Eric, we're trying to figure out a way for us to get together. He's going to be up in my neck of the woods, but I'm going to be gone then. So we're trying to figure out a time where I can come see him. Or Joss, actually, Joss and I can come see him. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> John Anderson, this is actually a very good question. Hey, Mark, crazy question. If I rent an apartment in Japan, will they show me how to use the facilities? He's talking about the toilets. Japanese toilets are different. Um, John, I actually have a Japanese toilet video of my experience the first time doing it, and then one explaining it as well, so you could watch that to help you out. Because the button's on the side. We actually have one upstairs. Jocelyn loved it so much, we, we, we have one in our house now. Um, just know the pressure. You do not want to go high pressure. You don't want to go high pressure. That's all I'm going to say medium pressure and then adjust accordingly okay um so there's that but it's funny because it'll play music it'll do perfume it'll like shoot a jet of water up there's all kinds of stuff 
Ben, what's your your view on Airbnb experiences tours? Uh, Airbnb experiences are the same thing as Via Tour. They just a it's it just collects them. They take a huge chunk of that profit. I'll be honest with you. If you want to help out a tour guide and you see someone on Via Tour, go find that website. Go find them on their actual website. And that hundred dollar tour it, it, that's on Airbnb and it'll be a hundred dollars on their website. They'll get the hundred dollars versus if it's Airbnb, they might only get like I don't know seventy dollars because those all those third parties they take a big chunk of it. That's why if you ever like an Airbnb or a VRBO or any kind of tour experience, talk to the owner and say, hey, could we do it another way? Because the owner will have other ways. They might not just have Airbnb. And so you can go through that. So they make more money on it, you know, because you're going to pay the same. But I'd rather have, you know, if I'm going to book some, I'd rather have the owner of this apartment I'm staying to get most of the profits, like 100% of the profits versus, you know, 60, 50, 40, 80%, depending on how it's set up. Let's see. Yes, Istanbul is probably going to be summer 2023. We're on our, we're doing a bunch of tours then, so we'll have that. Lori Sims, hello, hello. Yes, um, so I need to take the boys down to Chile. I've been there a few times. It's actually really good. Actually, for me, I know a lot of people say Colombia has the best, you know, empanadas. For me, I think Chile has the best empanadas out there. Just FYI. Travis Joyner, is Bratislava worth a day trip from Budapest? Yes, it is. Um. It's actually an easier day trip from Vienna, but either way, I mean, it's like an hour and a half. You know, you'll be fine. Um, it is well worth it. We have, I have a don'ts, yeah, I have a don'ts of Budapest, or don'ts, well, Budapest, yeah, but a don'ts of Bratislava video too, and a shots of Slovakia video, don'ts of Budapest. I have all those things that can help you out. Just search for any of you. If there's a city you're going to or a country you're going to, just put this, the country name in Walter's World and probably gonna have something for you. So like, like Rinsler from the Czech Republic. We got plenty of stuff on the Czech Republic. And yes, thank you, John. John would like to remind you to please smash that like button. So we have that. Now, for those of you that have asked questions, I haven't answered them. What you have to realize is that thing that's going by really fast for you is going by even faster for me. Um, so feel free to ask your questions again uh, in here, uh, like not 90 times in a row, like but like ask again and I'll get through them there um, because sometimes you just, you know, run out of time and it goes by so please um start asking them again and i will put things in like katie smith hey katie good to see you favorite places in the caribbean jamaica love jamaica love jamaica people are fantastic i know people get upset in jamaica because of the touts that are selling stuff at every tour stop but that's how people make money there you know it's like getting mad at the gas station person because they ask you to pay for gas that's just how they make money there's no social network to help people they don't make money so I think that's really cool. One thing I recommend, Jamaica, hire a driver, hire a local driver that's going to take you around because you can get a really great experience with it. We loved it. Jamaica is one of the places that the kids always want to go back to. I know I'd go back like that. I mean, it was fantastic. So you have fun. Let's see. <laughs> First use of bidet at a Japanese restaurant in San Francisco. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, like once you do it, you're like, wow. Like I understand what Joss is like, like – we, we, she's like, I have to have this. I'm like, it's fine. I think I, it was like a birthday gift for her. So, oh, well, it shouldn't be hello there because Kenobi's coming. So, so Sean, have you been to Israel? Is Israel safe? For, yes, Israel's safe for Westerners. Um, I have, I we, we have had two trips scheduled for there and I've lost a lot of money because <laughs> they both got canceled. Damn COVID. So anyway. Uh, Kofini Castle. No, Kofini is that what it said? There's, there's a castle that's about. It's like a 30 minute train ride away, bus ride away from Cardiff. Easy to do. Uh, one thing about Wales, you have a ton of castles and castle ruins to visit, and there's lots of tours that do it too. So if you don't want to do the driving, they can do the driving. Uh, but if you do do like an Uber out to a castle, make sure you you schedule a return before you go out there, just to make sure you can get back. Because I've seen people that are just like sitting at castles waiting for an Uber to hook up with them. And we're like, would you need a ride? So I have not even been to Oregon, Paul. It's one of the places I need to go. I think for states of the U.S., I still need to get to um, Hawaii and Alaska, uh, Oregon, Utah. I think that's it. Oh, and North, North Dakota. There's five. Yeah. Sorry. And for the uh, for Carafili, that's the castle by by uh, by by Cardiff. That's the one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oblife, Oblivife. Would not be a good brand name because people don't know how to say it. So I just taught that last week. So 
Okay, CJ KB. Hey, Mark, try to convince my friends to road trip Buffalo to Chicago this summer for a concert. The girls want to see the same show in Tampa. The guys are from Chicago need help. Who? If it's in the summer, yeah, Chicago is better in the summer. You're going to be miserable in Tampa. It's going to be even more hot. I mean, Chicago's be hot and humid too. So is Tampa. Chicago has much more museums and bars and well, different bars. And experience in the summer is a way better experience. If you go to a Cubs game, that'd be fun. Um, I would do Chicago over Tampa. I've gone to my, you know, I, I live two hours from Chicago. My sister-in-law, brother-in-law, my niece live in Tampa. My my wife's fam, like family members live in Tampa. So I go there enough. You notice that I have quite a few Chicago videos, but I don't have a lot of Tampa. I got a don't to Tampa and I eat to Tampa. You know, it's like when people are like, Tom Brady's going to go to Miami. I'm like, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I mean, Tampa's fine. Clearwater Beach is really good. Like, the beaches there are fantastic. Like, I can't – Clearwater Beach gets voted one of the best beaches in the U.S. You're not going to go in Ybor City, having your Cuban sandwich and going down there. It's fun. Um, but if I was going to go to a concert, I think – Concerts in Chicago – you know what I'm People in Chicago love their concerts. Like, love their concerts. Like, they're crazy about them. So, they get really into it. So, it might be a better experience. Yes. So, image, yeah, you really need to visit Utah. Yes. So, we're, we're looking – so you know how Jocelyn wants to do the RV thing? We're looking at an RV. We're talking to an RV company, like an RV resort company, about going out to Moab and going out there and filming. So we might get out there maybe later in the summer. So we'll see. We'll see. Yes, Mark. That's why she has the new toilet. Thanks. That's why. <laughs> Yes, better food in Chicago too. Yes. And actually, if you want to know what to eat in Chicago, we have on Jocelyn's channel, we have a new video on what to eat in Chicago. I have on Walter's Road, there's like five things to eat in Chicago. Jocelyn's got like 10 or 12 things to give you a little bit more information. So so check that out. We will get there. We will get there. We gotta get to why I know that. <laughs> As someone's family in Tampa, Chicago sounds fun. Yeah, exactly. You're like me. I'm like. Honestly, like my 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 in laws are like, why don't you come visit us more often? Why do you keep going to all these other places? I'm like, I I gotta go filming. I love my in laws, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tampa is is sweaty in the summer. Oh, Jocelyn Jocelyn just wrote me. She's in Araclion now because Tessa's in there. Oh. So Jocelyn, she was on the islands, and so to fly back from the islands to mainland Greece, she has to do she has to do a test. So fingers crossed it goes well. Yeah. So that's the thing is for those traveling this summer, remember the testing stuff is different in every country, and what is required, what's not required, you got to keep up with it because even like when we were looking up stuff for Greece, we wouldn't even find out about they have to test to go back to mainland Greece from the islands. So and and we know what we're doing. So it's kind of like what the heck. So. Ha, do you have ketchup for my hot dog? So on a Chicago dog, you never put ketchup because all the stuff on it is a perfect balance of all the flavors. So you don't put any ketchup on there. Now, if you do a normal hot dog, you, you can you can put ketchup on there. It's okay. Though, as Jocelyn says in our video on the shocks of Chicago that came out yesterday, you'll get the side eye. But uh, yeah, no, it's oh, so good. Oops, wait. So related music, Mark, when will you head off to Dubai, Abu Dhabi? Um hopefully January before school starts next year when the kids are back in school and I have a couple of weeks between before my classes start. That's actually, we're looking at Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates around there. We're looking at doing that. So that's one of those things. I remember I was talking earlier about my friends that I travel with. We're going to do a guy's trip. It's one of my friends that has, well, he has a much bigger budget than I do. Let's put it that way. So that's one thing. So I think I, 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 don't, I don't know if I have enough money to truly enjoy Dubai and all those places, but I can have a good time when I'm there. So that that's that's the goal is for January this year or this coming year. Yes, Gretchen's right. Cal Colorado. This is one thing people don't realize is, like, if you if you go around the U.S., you'll see a lot of people that wear Colorado hats and T-shirts, and a lot of people go, "Oh, it's because it was marijuana was legal there first. Like, no, people went to Colorado before marijuana was legal there, and um, for recreational use. But the hikes, the city, the towns, the beer culture, the the skiing. Colorado is gorgeous. I have uh, cousins that live in Steamboat Springs, and we're looking to go out and visit them. We actually going to go visit them during COVID when we did our trip out to Wyoming and and Idaho and Montana. But when we were supposed to go see them because they were going, it's like okay, we could see like these three days. We were in Scotts Butte, 
there's Scott's Bluff or Scott's Butte, uh, Nebraska. And we got to the top of the Butte and I couldn't get the key out of the ignition. The transmission thing messed up and it was Labor Day weekend. So like I had to park the car in a Ford dealer, like not a Ford dealership, the Nissan dealership across the street in their back lot and hide it, but leave the keys in the ignition because it couldn't come out. And I'm like, and we had all our luggage and I'm like, and they're like, yeah, well, it's Labor Day weekend. So we're not open. So someone will look at it on Monday. So it's like sitting there for multiple days. So I'm like, yeah, we didn't get to see my cousin. So it took a little while to get the, the car fixed. So yeah, Scott's Bluff. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lollapalooza is awesome in Chicago. That's a huge music festival. I remember Lollapalooza used to tour around. I went to a couple of those when I was a kid. Good times. We are going to be back in Maine. Those That same RV company we were talking to about going out to Moab, they have a thing in, um, in Maine that we're going to maybe go to and do a thing on RV resorts. So I, I have to actually write them back later today. Or today, yeah, by tomorrow, so. Grace, hi, Mark. Is London accessible for handicapped people? My dad uses a cane and has mobility issues and cannot go upstairs. Thank you. Uh, one thing I got to say for Europe in general, it is not, this is, it's not like the U.S. with ADA uh, at all, at all. Like I, I will get ha, not nice comments back from some Europeans, but if you compare the access that the U.S. has versus Europe, it is, there's no comparison. Um, the thing is Europe, because things are sold, you can't retrofit stuff. I find the best places, actually, if you look up, I have two old, like, skinny mark with no beard and i was still balding but they're there um that are specifically on dis disability travel in europe um look on there there's a top 10 i have a top 10 destinations and then things to think about video as well um london itself there's a number of things like the museums you the, the british museum be fine he's got to walk but there's they have elevators everywhere people are very helpful um, National Gallery, you're fine. The Tate Modern, you're fine. Um, even if you're going to Westminster Abbey, you're going to be okay because it's pretty flat when you're walking in there. So it should be okay with that. Um, yeah, I think for the main sites, I don't, I don't, I don't think Tower of London is going to work because you see a lot of the stuff. It's a lot of uneven steps and hill, hill, not hills, but like inclines, and then you got to go up steps someplace. Like they do have some retrofitting on there so there's some stuff so you could do that but there'll be some things i'd look at so yeah let's see ah yes evgeny good to see you hey hey hey! happy to join your stream in time what do you think about polar cruise to antarctica for whales and penguins spectating or arctic for white bears do you have recommendations um yes I, svalbard hold on Go to, I think it's expeditions.com. No, that's not it. Hold on. Let me, I'm looking it up here. Yeah. Go to expeditions.com. Oh, sorry. Lindblad. Lindblad. Um, yeah, it comes Lindblad. Expeditions. So Limba is a company, I, I, we actually have fans in there. We were actually talking about, we were supposed to do a Galapagos tour with them um, in December last year, but with everything with the school and we had moved and we, we ended up having to cancel, I feel bad because I think that has been a really great relationship and it's like, you know, that relationship's dead now. Um, but that is one I highly recommend they do with National Geographic um, tours. So they have very strict stuff they do. And so there, and it's a small, like, it's an expedition. It's not a cruise. Okay. That's one important thing. When you do an Arctic expedition or Antarctic expedition, it is not a cruise. It is smaller ships. It's going to be, there's the, the, the Drake quake where you have like boom, boom, boom on the boats. Uh, so there is that. Um, but that, that's who I would recommend. Okay. Niles is still upset. Catch never. Okay, man. I understand. It's funny. I miss like, when I used to live in Germany, I always get like sausages and bockwurst and vina. You know, I would never put ketchup on. I always put mustard. So. Deep dish. It is the best pizza ever created. You are not wrong. Though, tavern style pizza is what normal Chicago people eat because they don't want to wait forever for the Chicago style. Um, and you'll notice in all of our Chicago food videos, people be like, it's not just this. I'm like, yes, dude. Everybody's got 50 times of pizza. I understand that. I understand it. It's okay. Uh, so. Okay. So, Frenchie Mama. Dude, I love that name. That is awesome. I want to guess it's for the dog, maybe. Or, or. Maybe you're French. I don't know. Uh, we bought our train tickets ahead of time to save money. London, Bath, York. Yes. 
Anytime you're buying plane tickets, pretty much anywhere in the world, if you buy it ahead, you will save money, like significant amount of money. It's like buying plane tickets. You save a lot of money buying early. Um, I'm stressing about missing the train. Pointers. Okay, so London Bath, that's one shot. London, York's one shot. So these are all one shot things. So if you're there on time, you know, like trains in Europe are, are more on time than in the U.S. Um, one thing I would say is, you know, get to the, get to the train station a half hour beforehand if you feel uncomfortable. Don't don't wait till the last minute. I know when I lived in Germany, like if I had a train at like ten, I'd roll up at like nine fifty five, just run to the platform. Um, you know, and the thing is, is when you're in the UK. Their their departure things are look a little different than they do like in the U.S. So you got to find your right train. So maybe give yourself a little more time when you're there, so you can pick up a drink for the train ride and a little snack. Um, but don't worry, you'll you'll be fine, French mama. Don't worry. And those are all great places. Actually, those are four of my top places to go in the U.K. Like York is my favorite city to go to in England. Bath is Jocelyn's favorite one. I love it. Edinburgh is my favorite place to go. Well, Isle of Skye and Edinburgh are my favorite place to go in. In Scotland, London's always a great time. So that is a great combination. Escaping the Empty Nest. So this is Mark Finley here. If you're looking for, they have a lot of videos on the, you know, the truth about different places. So if you want to know about, I think they had one about the Hyatt in Boston and they did one about um, like going to like the, you know, there's tours they go on. You like want to know more. They do a nice little set of videos that go through like, hey, here's what you should know before you go. Uh, kind of like what we do, you know, and they have very specific like niche things on there. So go check out their channel and they can help out. And here's one thing. They're running a Wi-Fi hotspot so we can share five gigabytes per day. So excuse me, here's one thing. When you're looking at data, when you're going abroad, you have to get it. T-Mobile has a way where it's already connected, like set up, but otherwise it's not set up. And if you go abroad with your phone without getting a data package, you can spend thousands, not hundreds, thousands of dollars if you don't get it checked off. Okay, so make sure you call AT&T or, or Verizon and see they have a package for your phone. I just get the package for my phone. I pay like 10 bucks a day and I have my usual stuff. I do that because I have my phone for work because I use my phone for work and for everything. Um, so it's like, okay. Um, but we have done before where we got these, these uh, you know, mobile hotspots and they've been good, but you got to make sure whatever mobile hotspot you use, make sure you tell them the exact country you're going to go to. Even if you're only going to go to Germany for the day, make sure you put Germany in the countries that are there because we used one and they're like, oh, it's all of Europe. It's everywhere. We're like, we're going to all these. Oh, yeah, it's fine. You're in Europe. You'll be fine. Yeah, we ended up in Russia and it wasn't covered there. And so then like my phone just automatically connected. Well, just, uh, automatically connected. And I sent stuff and I got a thing from AT&T. You just spent $100. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? So make sure you make sure everything's kind of on the up and up with that. Oh, yes. John Anderson, for the person that was asking about the uh, Frenchy Mama, you're wondering about the trains. Yeah, you're going to have a, a, the thing. You had to scan it to go in and you scan it to go out. Don't throw it away. Keep it for a souvenir, but keep it just in case someone asked for it. OK. So Sean, okay, I'm from England and we have zero COVID entry requirements and our tourism has skyrocketed and brought us so much to the economy. Do you think other countries will notice and get rid of theirs? Um, you're already seeing that. Like France now is if you have your booster, you don't have to test. Uh, but if you if you don't have your booster or you have gotten your booster within the last two weeks, well, that's, you know, it, it, there are different things in there. Um, yeah, and I, I think countries like, and you're going to see more of that once once July hits. Because July is when Europeans start traveling. As much, even though Americans spend way more per capita on their travel expenditures than Europeans do, um, there's still a lot more Europeans that come. So they got to entice them to travel. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of the restrictions come down. Remember last summer, a lot of restrictions came down just for the summer. And they came back in the fall. I think you're going to see that because people are going to be fighting over those tourist dollars, okay, or tourist euros. Bradman, one of our new members. Good to see you on here. Hey, where can I buy Walter's World Gear? The website store is always empty when I go there. Yeah, so we had to shut down the that merchandise store because the merchandise provider, yeah, it didn't work out with them. So we need to get some new ones set up. When I do have the new ones set up, um, we will be announcing it. So it'll be on there. And you'll still be a link for the Walter's World store. I have links there because there'll be stuff for, like, if you want to get our travel planning one one class, you can buy that from there. Or it goes on Bright Trip, which is linked down below, which is coming right now. And then that'll be like for T-shirts and other stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna cut it back down because we have a lot of different stuff. Um, T-shirts sold, but like the beer koozies and the water bottles and the 
luggage tags and you know, stickers sold too. But we got to figure out what, what we're going to do. So, so we have that. Sorry. Sorry, I don't have it right now. My bad. So, Joseph, I have two weeks in Ireland. How long would you recommend for each major city? And should I try and see all of Ireland and take it slower? Two weeks, you can see a lot. Um, you're not just going to do major cities. Like Dublin, do Dublin at the end for like two or three days. Um, Galway, a couple of days, nice there. Uh, you know, a couple of days, uh, like a couple of days in Kilkenny, a couple of days in the Ring of Kerry, a couple of days. Um, like I don't Cork, I'd stay in Kinsale and go up to Blarney Castle. That that would be kind of what I would do. Let's see. Yes, migrating miles in France. I believe you don't need a booster as long as your last dose in the last 270 days. Correct. No, that is true. Uh, and they say if you have the booster, then it's good forever for now. So that that's where I, I, I don't know that that's where there's always things change. Like how I have my boosters set up, I have it so I'm covered for the, the that 200 the nine months. I waited to get mine so I could get it so it'd be through the rest of this year. So It's only too many. Yeah, here's the thing. Ireland, you want to go to the villages and meet the people and see the nature and the castles. So, like, we stayed at Kennedy Castle. It was fantastic in a little tiny town. Um, let's see. Andrea, what do I think about Florida? Um, it's hot. It's got beaches. You have that in Brazil. Um, Miami's got great Latin American food, Caribbean food. There's some good museums that are there. It's a fun time. Um, St. Augustine in the north is kind of cool to check out. Um, Orlando's always a popular place for tourists just because all the amusement parks. If you're not a amusement park person, if you go over just north of Tampa, you've got Tarpon Springs. There's a nice like small town where there's lots of stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff, uh, like Greek stuff there they, to check out. So. When are you visiting Steve and I in Orlando? I don't know. Uh, my friend that I met in Miami, Magnus, Orlando was actually supposed to be one of our, like that's where he was meet, like that's where he was working. And we flew him for that. He's like, no, I don't want to be here. Like, let's go meet Miami. So we went down there. I, but he goes there twice a year. And now that he gets to fly back to the US again, I'll probably go back to Orlando in the next six to eight months. Yes, exactly. That, that's one thing. Um, if you're getting your, if you haven't got your booster yet, you, for travel, it does make it easier. Someone asked this earlier. Um, like Greece, you had to have your booster within the last two weeks, like longer than the last two weeks, because otherwise it didn't count. You had to still do the PCR test. Um, so sometimes it's easier to have that. But I plan mine out because now with the 270 days, I'm going through the end of the year and there. So I'm, I'm okay through like Christmas travel. And then we'll see where things are because how things have kind of opened up. Yeah, I'm going to guess it'll be different by then. So, Daniel Feldman, what are some of the best European countries to travel to in May? In May, all of them are good. Weather's good. Uh, kids are still in school, so you don't have a lot of family travelers. At the end of May, you'll start bumping into some U.S. college backpackers, but otherwise, you'll be good to go. So, Hey, Mark, what about traveling to Italy? Is your plans for – yes, yes. We will be in Italy for three and a half weeks this year. Uh, this summer. Oh, thanks, Alexander. I, I appreciate it, my friend. So, Ed, yes, we will be doing a Philippines travel video. That's a little bit farther off. Um, one of the churches we go to, they do a mission trip there. Um, but with COVID, they've canceled mission trips. I think they don't have another one scheduled to 2024. So I'm probably going to do, hopefully we'll do that with them so we can kind of tie it together so we can do help out in some communities and do the tour and some stuff. So, but one thing, if you're going to go to the Philippines, people, make sure you know when monsoon season is because there will be a very different experience when you go. That's one of the things that's kind of held us up from Southeast Asia because when the kid, because we don't want to go for two weeks. We want to go for like two months, three months to Southeast Asia, but that's June and July, which is like rainy season. So or whatever it is. So, and hot, like really hot. So who knows? What country, what country have you been to that you'd love to go to? Uh, Israel, Egypt, Bhutan, those are the last three. That, I mean, maybe New Zealand, too. Those are the ones I really I haven't been to that I really want to get to. Yes, John Lim brings out a good point. I'd love to go back to travel, but the airline tickets nowadays are quite high. Before I could get business class tickets from Asia to Europe, that below two, two grand, now everything's three grand plus. Yeah, I've seen the same thing. So the problem is, is 
you have a lot more demand now. Demand's coming back for travel, but all those airlines cut all that staff. They cut all those flights. They cut all those things. So you have less planes going, so they're more packed. And, you know, supply and demand. Demand's high. Supply's low. Price is going to go up. So, so there is that. <sighs> yeah. I was looking yesterday to go back to this fall, and the ticks were easy $400 more than last time. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. So. So I will finish off with this one. Well, actually, I can do Haley first. Do I have a fair air, favorite airline? Delta. They never pay us to do anything. I wish they would, but they don't give us anything. But that's the airline we like the most. Um, and Aneta will finish off with this one. Would you rather live in a mansion in your favorite place in the world or travel anywhere for a straight for a straight year in the world? I would like to travel for a year straight. That would be my that would be my jam. Just a year of going around and taking it all in. I think that would be wonderful. I don't need a mansion, my favorite place. I can get a you know one bedroom with Jocelyn, maybe two bedrooms. So we have like a place to separate. So when I snore, I can sleep in the other room because she ain't moving. Uh, so we have that. So yeah. Anyway, I want to say thank you everybody for hopping on today. I just want to do a little live. I haven't done a lot of these lately because life is just crazy how it is. So it's nice to get it back on here. Um, I wish you all the best. Please hit the like button before you head off. All those people that gave us, you know, our new members, thank you for everything. Everybody with all your super chats, it really makes a difference. I want to say thank you to everybody and ever our members and patrons. Thank you for helping us make these honest travel videos. And I hope this helps you get ready for some of your travels this summer. So I wish you all the best. And until next time, happy travels, as Jocelyn would say. Bye. <laughs>